Hello, today's topic of discussion will be assisting at mealtime. My name is Ann Rhodes. I'm a registered dietitian. You will spend quite a bit of your day preparing clients for mealtime, actually feeding or assisting them, and cleaning up afterwards. So this is a very important topic. Also, for most clients, a, a fun time of the day. They enjoy eating. There, there are many, many steps involved in in preparing clients to eat and so we will be going over quite a few of them. First thing is that you need to check that your client is appropriately dressed. In some facilities clients are dressed in street clothes for all the meals. Some it's appropriate to wear a robe and slippers at breakfast. Uh, in a hospital setting most clients will be wearing their hospital gowns at all meals. But you still need to make sure that they are dressed the way they want to be. Make sure that the client is toileted. Uh, many people will be able to do that themselves. Some you'll need to help or to remind. Uh, have their faces and hands washed and, and um, comb their hair if they're unable to do that themselves. Make sure that they, they look presentable. They look like they're going out to eat. Um, this is especially important in facilities uh, where, where your client is coming into a dining room to eat with other people. Assist with oral hygiene. Have the people brush their teeth or brush it for them before each meal. Very important, especially at breakfast time. If your client is going to be eating in bed, make sure that the head of the bed is elevated 90 degrees. If they're going to be sitting in a chair, make sure that the chair back is upright and that they are also at a 90 degree angle. This provides um, the most safe environment for eating. Clear away anything unpleasant in the area around where your client will be eating. If there's an emesis basin, a bedpan, a urinal, make sure that they're all removed. Uh, clean off the overbed table and wipe it down and, and make the area attractive for the resident. When you're going to serve their food, make sure that you have the right tray for the right client. This can be done by looking at their name band and the tray card. Check the tray before giving it to the client. Make sure that the proper utensils are on the tray. Make sure that the proper food is there, that they have what they've uh, asked for, that nothing has um, spilled. And make sure that, um, that everything looks appealing before you bring the tray into the client. Place the tray on the overbed table and adjust it to a comfortable height for the client. Arrange the dishes and flatware so that the client can reach everything easily. Make sure that the drinking water is fresh and handy. If you're feeding a client in a dining room, take the, the plates and cups off of uh, the tray and place it onto the table. When you're going to be feeding uh, the resident or assisting them, you'll need to make sure that the atmosphere is pleasant and that you have an unhurried approach to the eating. A client may wish to pray before the meal, so make sure that you give them enough time to do that. You want to be promoting independence as much as possible, but need to help when needed. You might need to cut their food up. Opening cartons can be difficult for many people. You need to alternate food and fluids. If you're feeding someone, give them a bite or two of food, then give them a sip of liquids. Ask the client in which order they would like to eat their food. When you're going to feed someone, sit at their client's eye level. Don't stand or over them and don't feed more than one client at a time. Do not engage your client in lively conversation while they're eating. You can talk to them a little bit, but don't distract them from the task at hand. Fill the fork or spoon half full or less according to the client's ability to swallow. Determine a safe temperature for, for eating. You can do this in several ways. One is to feel the outside of the bowl or the cup and see how hot it is. Uh, another would be to put a little of the liquid or food on your wrist. If it's too hot uh, to be comfortable on your wrist, it's probably too hot for your client's mouth. Never blow on the food to cool it down. Never stick your finger in the food to test. Never taste the food yourself. If you have an alert and oriented client, you might um, suggest that they uh, taste the food themselves. Take a tiny sip to make sure it's not too hot. 
Assist your client in maintaining a neat and dignified appearance while they're eating. You can provide a clothes protector or a napkin if you're feeding someone and get a little food on their uh, face or if, if some liquid is dribbling down their chin, uh, make sure that you wipe that off for them. While you're feeding or assisting someone, you need to be observing for, for coughing, vomiting, shortness of breath, uh, holding food in the mouth, uh, swallowing or any t other type of problems. This will be discussed in more detail in another tape but needs to be mentioned here, if you see any of those behaviors, please notify your supervisor or your nurse. Never take anything off the tray to eat yourself, even if your client offers it to you. And if you notice a family member or visitor eating off the um, client's tray, let the nurse know that also. After the mealtime, it's important to remove the tray as soon as the client is finished eating, or if they're in a dining room, to allow them to get up and, and leave the room. Note the amounts of fluids taken. You'll be recording this on what's called an intake or out, output record. Also notice what the client has or has not eaten. This will also be recorded on an appetite board according to your facility's policy. And if you notice that a client is frequently eliminating one food item if they never drink their milk or never eat their meat. You'll want to let uh, the, your supervisor or nurse know that. Assist the client to wash their hands and face afterwards and brush their teeth or dentures if they'd like. Check their clothing for cleanliness. If they've spilled on their clothes, you may want to um, help them change their clothes. Ask them if they'd um, like to use the bathroom after the meal. Make sure that um, when you leave a client's room, that their telephone and call light are within easy reach and that they have all the items they want uh, close to their bedside. If, you're, uh, if they're leaving the dining room, ask them where they want to go and, and get them set up where they want to be also. Report any problems interfering with nutrition to your supervisor or nurse. Another duty that you'll have involves uh, nourishments or snacks and fresh water. You'll be providing snacks or, or nourishments to um, specific clients where that is ordered by a physician. Uh, might be um, if they have open wounds or burn patients um, or someone who can't get enough to eat at a specific meal. Uh, you'll be providing extra protein and calories for energy. The nourishments may be in liquid or solid form. They might be having cheese and crackers and a glass of juice or they may be having um, a liquid supplement um, that they would just drink. Uh, snacks are usually served three times a day, mid-morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m., mid-afternoon between 2.30 and 3 p.m., and at bedtime, which may also be called HS, um, and that's usually between 8 and 10 p.m. You may also have a specific time that you have to feed a certain client. Usually, Snacks are passed by the dietary department, but it is the caregiver's responsibility to make sure that the snacks are eaten by the client. And you'll need to notify um, your nurse if they're not accepting it or if they're complaining that they're still hungry afterwards or say they're tired of the snack and want something else. You'll also be providing uh, fresh water for your clients. Uh, different facilities have different policies, but typically uh, each shift a client would get fresh ice and water. It will be your responsibility to know if your client can have water. Sometimes clients are only allowed ice chips, or they can only have water without ice in it, or they might be on a fluid restriction, and then you would not be giving them um, extra fluids. Occasionally, clients will be on what's called force or push fluids, and that's when they need to be getting more fluids than they typically would, would take as they desire. In that case, every time you are in the client's room or any time that you're taking them to an activity, you offer them water. Would you like something to drink right now? You take them to the bathroom when they're done. Say, now would you like something to drink? And you'll be recording how much they drink. Some clients are also on restricted fluids. This may be someone who's having kidney problems or heart problems or having swelling in their ankles. 
In this case, they're restricted to a specific amount of fluids a day. And then you'll also be keeping track of that. And so if they want something to drink between meals, you have to make sure that it fits into their allotment. There may be situations in which a client is unable to have any food or fluid and cannot eat in the normal way. This may occur if a client is unconscious, if they're having surgery, if they have any disease of the digestive tract, they have persistent vomiting, or if they're unable to swallow without aspirating, which is also called choking. First thing you need to know is the term NPO, which you'll see frequently. That's called nothing by mouth. That is when they can't have anything, ice chips, water, food, anything. This can happen prior to uh, surgery, if someone is um, needing lab work, or if someone has aspiration problems and they can never have anything to eat. And it's your responsibility to know which of your clients are NPO, either permanently or that specific time. Then you'd need to let your nurse know if you see them eating or drinking anything. One way of giving clients fluids if they are NPO is through something called intravenous feedings, or IV. This is where you take um, uh, uh, a needle and put it into the vein and they get their fluids that way. Typically seen in the hospital, sometimes seen in nursing homes when a patient is not getting enough, uh, if they're not taking enough fluids orally and it's a way to rehydrate them. Another method of feeding a patient is called total parenteral nutrition. In this method, all the fluids um, have protein, calories, and uh, fats in them. And it is, um, it is provided through a large vein, frequently in the chest area or in the neck. And all their nutrition is, is received that way. And that's for a client whose gut does not work, um, cannot get enough um, nourishment at all um, that way. A more typical um, method of feeding someone who can't eat in the traditional way is called enteral feeding. This is specially prepared liquid formulas that are provided through a tube. The tube will either be administered through the nose and into the stomach, and this is called a nasogastric or NG tube, or a tube that's directly inserted into the stomach uh, through the skin, and that's called a gastrostomy or G tube. Uh, as a caregiver, your responsibilities um, for these tubes will be to make sure that there's no tension or pulling on the tube when the client changes position. You don't ever want to risk having the tube pulled out. Check your client to make sure that there's no skin irritation or reports of pain around the tube or the taping site. Check the tubing for kinks. The fluids can't flow through if there's a kink in the tube. Make sure the client's not lying on their tubing. And you may need to remind some of them that they can't be lying on it or they can't roll over it with their wheelchair. And you'll need to be providing frequent mouth care for your clients when they're not eating. Uh, you'll be uh, brushing their teeth more. You'll be using moist swabs to moisten their mouths. You'll be needing to keep their lips uh, moistened with Vaseline or, or something else. Um, notify your nurse if the controlling device is, make, is beeping or alarming. That indicates that there's something wrong with the method of, of transferring the food into the client. With an enteral feeding, you need to keep the head of the bed elevated between 45 and 90 degrees during feeding and for 30 to 60 minutes afterwards. If your client is on continuous feedings, then their head of the bed will always have to be elevated. This is to, risk, uh, to prevent um, risks of aspiration or the food coming back up uh, through the esophagus. You'll need to make sure that the tube is kept clean and free of any mucus at the entrance uh, to the nose or the stomach. You'll fasten the connecting tubing to the client's clothing uh, to prevent strain or tension. And then you'll need to report to your supervisor or nurse if a client is retching, if they're complaining of nausea, if they have diarrhea, and let the supervisor know that immediately. <clears throat> 
Now we're going to be watching two demonstrations on feeding clients. The first one will be assisting a client who can feed themselves, and the second demonstration will be feeding a client um, who cannot feed themselves. Assisting the client who can feed himself. Wash hands. Assemble equipment. Bedside commode, bedpan, or urinal. Disposable gloves. Wash water and soap. Oral hygiene items. Assist with toileting if needed. Put on robe and slippers and assist to chair. Provide washcloth to wash hands and face. Assist with oral hygiene or denture care. Assist to comb hair. Clear overbed table and position in front of client. Remove unpleasant items from sight. Wash hands. Obtain meal tray and check for completeness. Check dietary card with client's identification band. Place tray on overbed table and arrange food in convenient manner. Assist in food preparation as needed. Place napkin to protect clothing. Record fluids on intake and output record. Record food intake on appetite record. Remove tray as soon as client is finished. Assist to wash hands and face and provide oral care as needed. Remove overbed table. Assist to bed if needed and lower head of bed. Put personal items, phone, and call light back where the client wishes them. Wash hands. Feeding the dependent client in bed. 
Prepare client for meal as shown in previous demonstration. Obtain meal tray. Check identification bracelet with diet card. Raise head of bed to 90 degree angle. Prepare foods for eating. Sit down near client so you are at eye level and lower the side rail. Place napkin under chin. Determine safe temperature for food. Feed food in order desired by client. Use spoon only half full. Feed alternating food with liquids or as client desires. Feed at appropriate pace. Do not rush. Converse with client in pleasant manner, but avoid too much talk. Encourage to eat quality foods. Encourage client independence when possible. Complete tasks following meal as previously shown.